Green light 180 watt XPS, standard technique for optimal outcomes. Step 3, treatment of the remaining right lobe and case completion. The following educational video will highlight the 12 o'clock incision followed by complete removal of the right lobe and case completion. Here we see the continued vaporization technique with rotational and retrograde movement of the fiber toward the vera montanum to debulk the large sized right lateral lobe. Note the adequacy of tissue removal and the size of the bubbles that are emitted during vaporization. The distance between the laser fiber and the plasma bubble, which is the most intense area of orange crimson, is optimized to be less than two millimeters. As the surgeon backs up close to the sphincter, as we see here, it is important to be judicious both on the energy level and the level of return of the fiber. One must not surpass the sphincter and cause stress incontinence. As we had mentioned in step two on the treatment of the left lobe, the same principles exist, which is adequate treatment of the anterior and apical areas, which are the most difficult and possibly the most concerning for new users. After debulking of the central part of that right lobe, we continue with our 7 o'clock incision, which wasn't taken down as deeply during initial dissection. So as such, here in the mid and apical regions of the prostate, that same 7 o'clock incision is carried down to undermine the aspect of that right lateral lobe. What we can then do is follow that same capsular fibers along and undermine the remaining aspect of the lobe and then drop it with that 11 o'clock incision to get it down. Here, we can then use that same seesaw-like motion, which emulates a standard TERP technique of withdrawing the fiber in a straight line, can be done to create a homogeneous groove and continue chiseling along the plane of the surgical capsule and the adenoma. This will allow for a more cleaner resection of the tissue. Once that plane is developed a little bit, the metal capsular fiber can then be placed on the capsule and treat from a 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock position and therefore take down some of the adenoma. What we've done now is withdrawn to the level of Vera Montanum to see that anterior tissue from our 1 o'clock incision on the other side and it hanging into the surgical space. So what we've done now is move back to that 12 o'clock position and continue the dissection along our pre-marked area of surgical capsule and working from a known to unknown direction. Note that the energy delivery is into the adenoma and not toward the capsule. While there is a large working defect, we need to remove this tissue to eliminate recurrence and irritative symptoms from this tissue hanging in the prosthetic fossa. Note that the working element of the fiber is a little bit more distal 
away from the camera lens. This is important and is not being demonstrated on this video is the hand positioning of the camera. The lens is usually rotated 180 degrees to allow for the metal beak to be at the 6 o'clock position and far away from the energy delivery laser. This prevents damage to the sheath and the cystoscope and it's very important for the surgeon to understand this and be recognizing that such small maneuvers can easily damage cystoscopes which are valued at five to ten thousand dollars. It is for this reason that I work approximately three to four millimeters more distal than during the lateral lobes and the floor. Here we can see us taking down the adenoma rather than cutting along its grooves and undermining and fully removing the tissue as in the case of a nucleation. In huge prostates, this is a technique which can be used to remove small strips for pathological analysis and to make the surgical time reduced. Nevertheless, with the 180 watt settings, I feel that this is no longer necessary. Here you can see us simply working down onto this pedunculated adenoma and taking our time to remove tissue from the bladder neck toward the varimontanum direction with a sweeping style technique. We now move a little bit more forward after taking down the bulk of this adenoma. And you can see that this tissue is a little bit more fibrous. It doesn't vaporize as well and is a bit more gritty. As we mentioned before, that not all prostates are alike and that even within a prostate, not all tissue is the same. So such adjustments to be made and taking a little bit longer to get all that tissue vaporized. Again, we refer, refer to the 9 o'clock undermined area of the adenoma, and we are simply following along that same groove here at the bladder neck to release that tissue. We now have a view from the Verimontanum near the end of case completion and stop the water flow. This allows for the pressure of the water within the prostate to fully decompress and show any areas of bleeding. Those are then coagulated. And finally, we insert the catheter at the end of the procedure. And here we can see the color of the outflow. This is without any irrigation or traction. Clear. And here's our gentleman in the recovery room one hour after procedure demonstrating the clarity of the outflow. It is for this reason that we can do this as an outpatient procedure. The majority of my patients are being discharged home within six hours of the surgery without a Foley. For those patients who are older, they are kept in overnight. Here is a cystoscopic image six months after surgery demonstrating the re-epithelialization of the bladder and therefore a successful outcome. This completes our surgical technique for standardized outcomes by Dr. Kevin Zorn.